Welcome to the Respiratory System Lab Review, looking at the lungs, tracheal, bronchial tree, and the larynx. Looking at this mid-sagittal section of the head, we're going to see the paranasal sinuses. Here's the frontal sinus. Here is the sphenoidal sinus. Next, the nasal cavity. We have the external nares here. We have the internal nares here, then the superior, middle, and in inferior nasal conch. Next we have the pharynx. Pharynx means throat and it's divided into three parts. The nasopharynx here, and the oropharynx, then the laryngeopharynx. Now the oropharynx and laryngeopharynx are also used by the digestive system. Next, we have the uvula, which hangs off of the soft palate, part of the soft palate. The hard palate is going to be made up of the maxilla bone and the palatine bone. And then down here is the larynx or voice box. And we have the thyroid cartilage. We have the cricoid cartilage. Up here we have the epiglottis, which closes over as you swallow food to keep food from going down into the trachea and into the lungs. Then we have the glottis. The glottis, it's the opening between the vocal cords. Here we have the retinoid cartilage. And then we have the true vocal cords or vocal folds and then the false vocal cords or vestibular folds right here. Okay, now taking a look at the larynx, we have the hyoid bone at the top, the thyroid cartilage. Below that is going to be the cricoid cartilage, and then this membrane in between is the cricothyroid ligament. Looking at it from a lateral view, Again, we have the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, and the cricothyroid ligament. Posterior view, we have the epiglottis, we have the retinoid cartilage. From a mid-sagittal view, we have, once again, the epiglottis. We have the false or vestibular folds right here. And then we also have the true vocal folds or vocal cords right here. Now, looking at the trachea, as you can see, the trachea runs from the larynx uh, down here to where it's going to split. But uh, you can see that we have these tracheal rings. The tracheal rings are going to be made of hyaline cartilage. It's going to give a little bit of flexibility. Um, it's also going to give some rigidity to it. In between is going to be some membrane which allows for flexibility and for rotation and such. But basically the hyaline cartilage rings are to keep the trachea from collapsing down. Now this is the anterior view. If we flip it over to the posterior view we can see the trachealis muscle and that these tracheal rings are actually C-shaped and that um, this trachealis muscle is going to uh, hold these rings together. It's also going to allow for this um, the opening of the trachea to constrict down or to open up as needed. Okay, so again the trachealis muscle. Some other parts you want to know right here as it divides right in this crotch area is the carina. Okay, the carina, very sensitive area. If you accidentally inhale something and as soon as it hits the carina, or if you're suctioning a patient, for instance, and that catheter hits the carina, they're going to have an explosive cough. Okay, so it's very sensitive. Okay, so the carina. We have our primary bronchi, okay, bronchus is singular, bronchi is plural, 
And right here, this bronchus on the right is going to be wider and shorter, where it's going to be more narrow and longer on the left. After the primaries, we have our secondary or lobar bronchus or bronchi. Okay. And then the segments that are colored are going to be our tertiary uh, bronchi, uh, which are also known as segmental bronchi. And if you want more information on naming those, then I have a separate video that you can watch on that. So go to my channel and you'll be able to find that. Okay, looking at the lungs, the lungs have an apex, which is the top, and a base, which is at the bottom. The right lung is going to have three lobes. We have a superior, a middle, and an inferior lobe. And we're also going to have a horizontal fissure and a right oblique fissure. Now, why didn't I say um, the right horizontal fissure? Well, it's because there's only one. The left lung does not have one. The left lung has two lobes, a superior lobe and an inferior lobe and a left oblique fissure. Also, you're going to find the cardiac notch. Once again, the right lung has a superior, middle, and inferior lobe, a horizontal fissure, and the right oblique fissure. Looking on the left, once again, is the superior lobe, the inferior lobe, and the left oblique fissure, and the cardiac notch. Now looking at this model, we can see the hilum. And if I just rotate it a little bit and zoom in, again, here is the hilum of, this would be the right lung. And the hilum is the area where the pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins enter and exit the lung, and also the bronchi enter the lung. Okay, so right in here is the hilus. And you'd have the same on the, the uh, left side as well. So again, the hilum. And just as a reminder that it's a little bit different when we're looking at uh, the lung or the vessels, I mean, going to the lung from the heart, that the pulmonary arteries here are blue and that the pulmonary veins are red. Okay, so a little different. Remember that vessels going away from the heart are arteries, but the blue and the red, uh, they represent whether the blood is oxygenated or not. And in this case, this is blood coming back from the body, goes through the pulmonary trunk, then through the pulmonary artery, so that um, to the lungs, uh, so that that uh, blood is not oxygenated. Okay, and so then it picks up oxygen from the lung, gets rid of carbon dioxide, in which case the blood is a lot more red, and so it's depicted as red here, the pulmonary veins going to the left atrium. Okay, and then of course you can also see the the bronchi here. Here's your primary, primary. Here we see some secondaries. And once again, just kind of a review that the pulmonary arteries are blue, and the pulmonary veins are red. Let's remove the heart out of the way just to get a little better view. Again. Pulmonary arteries are blue, pulmonary veins are red. 